May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. Today I'll be reacting to another video from Charlie Keck. Today's video is titled Breaking Down the Danger of an Open Border. So without further ado, let's get started. With the whole immigrant thing, you said that, you know, we come at one of at some point you said, oh, you come and you work hard. How about we work hard? And it's a guarantee. You used guarantee. That was the exact phrase you used that we can get somewhere. If but, you do four things, but go ahead. I should but addition. the whole, like some of the immigrants, yeah, they may be illegal, but they do work really hard to come here and provide a life for their kids. And then they get snatched away and their nine-year-old little girl is just sitting there crying and bawling her eyes out why her mom can't be with her after her mom just tried really hard to work really hard for her life. Okay, so a couple things. If you break the law to get into America, you're putting your kid's life in jeopardy too. We, we have immigration laws. We have not enforced them. Justice is blind. Justice can be something that must be equally interpreted. When that beautiful statue of Lady Justice, she has a cloth over her, over her eyes because justice is supposed to be blind. I'll, you know what happens for a legal immigrant? Let's say a legal immigrant from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. If they want to come to America, they have to prove to the embassy in America that they have not committed a crime for two years. If they get sometimes a speeding ticket equivalent in Indonesia or in Korea, their visa will be yanked almost instantaneously. So we have a double standard immigration system. One, where the rest of the world has to operate with a clean bill of health criminally, that they can't break any laws in their home country and they can't break any laws here because they might be subject to deportation or not coming into the country. Then we have a whole different set of laws if you jump across the border. That's not fair and it's not sustainable because what now ends up happening is you have anywhere between 15 to 21 million people, could be even more than that, where they're living in the shadows. And that's not a good thing. I don't want that to happen. I mean, if, if, if I had my way, I would say, yeah, of course, I, I would love to have as many people in this country as possible. But it also severely disenfranchises the 180 other countries across the world that equally want to be here just as much, that are not within economic prox proximity there. Um, so I understand the question. The other thing is this, there is not, there's isolated incidents of the United States government through ICE going after child sex traffickers, MS-13 members, but there is not mass deportations happening in this country right now. It's just not happening. Should we go after people that are smuggling guns and smuggling drugs and smuggling children? Oh my goodness, yes. Final thing is this, the poorest Southern border allows immoral behavior to continue, evil behavior. Children that get smuggled across the southern border. Opioids, heroin, guns. MS-13 runs the entire southern border. This is why they fight so hard against the construction of a southern border wall. 95% of border patrol agents, half of which are Hispanic, by the way. The border patrol agents always get such a bad rap, but half of them are Hispanic. 95% of border patrol agents say a wall would help them better do their job to confiscate drugs and intercept children that might be in the midst of child sex trafficking. So anyway, I appreciate the question. My, my stance on immigration is this. Legal immigrants, huge positive, huge surplus for this country. You even saw me defend having more immigrants come to yeah. America. Border jumping and line cutting, it's not who we are. It breaks the law and it should not be tolerated. So, thank like you for your time. Did you have a follow-up really quick or? Make it quick because I want to get to as many questions as possible. So. I like your, I like your, uh, your answer, state answer. I just want to know, okay, so what would you do that more accessible for the ones that are trying to get here legally and it's not happening? So I think we should, we should have an unlimited amount of genius visas and unlimited amount of merit visas. So if you have, if you are able to prove that you have a very specific skill and there are anywhere between 30 to 40 million people like this worldwide, I think you should be able to give it a chance to come into America. We have huge capacity in this country, massive amount of natural resources, huge land. And guess what? I get people in the conservative movement that push back against this. Charlie, we're full. I, 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 okay, I know this sounds silly. Fly from Chicago to Reno and tell me that we're full, okay? For three and a half hours. You know, there's massive amounts of land and huge development that we can have. I believe that the only limiting factor we have is saying that ideas will somehow run out. There, is, there are studies to show that a steady flow of immigrants keep a country on its toes. It keeps a country that's working true. hard that's and true. taking risks, and it keeps other people competing against them. I think that's a really healthy thing. Someone who believes so firmly in markets, I want people that always have new business ideas. I want people that are willing to disrupt the status quo. 
I want the next hungry entrepreneur from Cuba or Venezuela or for South Africa. That's how we, that's why we have 85 out of the most valuable, 85 out of hundred of the most valuable companies in the world. And so anyway, I, I would say to expand it, it should be much quicker to legally immigrate in this country and much easier. We've made it so hard. And the president of the United States says it correctly. We're going to have a very big wall with a big door. And I think we're going to get back to the door so we understand that legal immigration is a healthy backbone to this country that we must celebrate. So thank you for your question. I appreciate it. We got to get to the next one, Seth. Thank you. Hello. Uh, hi. Um, so just, just to start, I'm an independent, so I'm not like a liberal or anything. But, uh, but, um, so my grandparents, they came here in the 1940s and, um, they came here with like $40 in their pocket. Where did they come from? They came from Haiti awesome. um, and they were able to build themselves up through real estate and they were able to send all my aunts, uncles, and my mother to college. And now they're all in graduated and they're in their professions and my mom became a doctor. So I'm pretty proud of like, that's the, the American immigration. dream. Yeah, Congratulations. That's, that's what we're talking about. And um, also, like, a lot of illegal immigrants account for, uh, like, farm farming work and factory work in America. And um, it's because a lot of people in America are unwilling to do that sort of labor. And um, if we curb illegal immigration, how would you propose to solve um, the possible amount of, like, under... Sure. So, performing jobs. seasonal work visas. It's that simple. Give seasonal work visas for people that are willing to do difficult agricultural work. So all the seasonal work visas, you get a temporary social security number, you pay tax, you pay payroll tax, you pay income tax. We know who you are. If you commit a crime, we know exactly that. And we deport you immediately. Now we have no idea. We have no idea. It's not, it's, it, no one can possibly argue that that's a, that's a sustainable system for the country. So that's a very simple way. But in order for there to be seasonal visas, you have to have a restriction on people cutting in line. The restriction would be a wall. And that, that's, the, that's a key element to re redefine, not redefining, but restructuring our immigration system, which is so horribly and terribly broken. And I, I talk about a wall and people say, Charlie, why are you against immigration? I say, I literally have talked so much about the value of immigration. I'm against people that come here in defiance to our laws and come into the shadows and intentionally break United States immigration law. I think it's a disservice to people like your grandparents that came here in the 1940s from Haiti. That's what's best and most beautiful about this country is people that came here legally. And so when they came here legally, they were, they were registered in the system. They were able to pay taxes, buy a house, start a bank account. And now a couple generations later, would you say your life is better than their life was? Probably, right? And so you're the story of America. So when I talk about the guarantee of America, almost very few people in America, unless your grandfather was Andrew Carnegie or John D. Rockefeller, very few people have it worse today than your grandparents did. Very few people, unless it was some titan or something horrible happened, it's 99% of Americans have it better than your grandparents did. We have progressively been getting better and better. And there's, a re there's many reasons for that, but I appreciate the question. Seasonal visas would be the way that we fix it. So thank you. I, I love this, especially the, the last guy that asked this question. He was talking about what if we cut out illegal immigration who do this hard job? And I feel like, and people will apply for it because people are looking for a way to come to America. So sincerely speaking, they will apply for it. I think there was a certain time, I don't know if it's Canada or I don't know, they were looking for truck drivers. You see, if you have truck drivers, it was a visa for them because it was like they were shorting, you know, truck drivers. So a whole lot of people in Africa started applying for such job. It's normal, you see, so long as the pay is worth it and people know that, yes, by doing it, you know, driving truck in the United States, they can make way more money than doing it in their home country. They would apply for visa because, you know, it's something they do here and they're getting a better pay for the same work they do. So why then? People will surely apply for it. So uh, the same thing applies to this hectic job, maybe farming and other job. They will do it. I think one thing that was trending in Africa was caregiving, you know, people wanted to travel you know caregiving was you know happening you don't need to have any skills you just need to go there and they will put you through on what to do and people were applying for visa just to go out there and you know provide you know care you know love to these elderly people and i i i see reason with charlie so long as you can stay in line get the proper document and travel you're kind of free to do whatever you want to do you know now you can apply for you know 
a bank account you know apply for you know different things pay your tax and all now you are free to move around legally you know if you're an illegal immigrant now you are always hiding you can't really do job that will pay you well and your pay your 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 your, your employer can you know do whatever he wants to do with you because he knows you are not going anywhere he can underpay you who are you going to report to the police when you go there they will deport you so now they they feel they can use you because you can't complain about it so the best thing is if you are going to any country do the right thing when you're in the country do the right thing if the country say they don't like people that smoke they don't like people that drink they don't like reckless driving whatever their rule is try to live up to that rules because that is what keeps you there you know when you are you are an immigrant and you decide to start breaking rules they will just deport you to the to, to your country because they feel like you are not ready to be in their country or they don't want you to corrupt the good people of their country so it's, it's just like you're going to university what's your purpose there your, your purpose is to learn to to learn how to you know learn a skill maybe not learn a skill but learn the knowledge your teachers are willing to pass on so when you come out you can use that knowledge to you know get a job that will, that will, that will provide for you so if you if you are traveling to a country you are there to do what you're there to you know to work to provide for your family back home to to make life better for you so why then do you want to jeopardize it by doing things that the country does not approve of i love this so much and for the first lady i, I love how she you know her questions and i love the father charlie clarified things to her you know no matter how we see things the best thing is whatever you're doing make sure you're doing something right okay because if you're doing something right like there is this joy in you that whatever you're doing is right but when you're doing something wrong you are hiding every time you see you don't want people to see what you're doing you are you are not proud of what you do anyway i love this and i would one day visit america maybe not to stay there permanently but at least see the place for myself and if well that is it if you enjoyed this video click on the like button if you want to see more videos like this click on the subscribe button thanks for watching and remember this